Hi guys, I was editing this video and I wanted to give you a heads up. Like who is this video going to most help? Who should be interested in watching this video? Number one, people who have been told they have the MTHFR gene and want to know what that means and how it will affect them. Number two, patients that have been told by their doctor they have a buildup of a protein in their blood called homocysteine. Because this lab value, when you have this, you're at a greater risk for heart disease, cancer, and autoimmune. And number three, people who are just curious about one of the body's major detoxification processes called glutathione. This video gives you a nutritional recipe of vitamins and minerals you can take to boost your glutathione detox system, reducing homocysteine, and solving the MTHFR gene issue. Hi, I'm registered dietitian Myrna Hay, empowering people to know how small nutritional changes can greatly impact their health. Today, we're gonna to talk about the MTHFR gene. About 20% of the population carry a gene that puts them at greater risk for heart disease, cancer, autoimmune, and dementia. They can easily be fixed with nutrition. The gene I'm referring to is the MTHFR gene, short for methylene tetrahydrofolate reductase, and it impairs a chemical process in the body called methylation. And when this chemical process doesn't work like it should, you become a high risk for many health problems. And your doctor may not even recognize that it can be easily fixed with nutrition. And instead, you're treated with drugs when nutrition could have solved the problem. The reason why this methylation process is so important is that this is what the body uses to get rid of toxins in your body. And I'm about to show you and explain the methylation pathway to you. And I want to also explain it to you as a recipe. When you use a recipe to bake a cake, you make this happen by adding ingredients like eggs, flour, butter, and the process is called baking a cake. And the product you get is a cake. When you do the methylation recipe, you add in certain vitamins, minerals, and amino acids. And this process is called methylation. And the end product you get is glutathione. Glutathione is the cake. The methylation process is the recipe. Glutathione is the major detoxifier for free radical toxins in your body. And I'm also gonna explain to you those as well. So let's look at the methylation recipe for glutathione and see how nutrition can make it or break it. So let's talk about the methylation process. This is that recipe I talked about to get us to the end product of glutathione, the master detoxifier. Glutathione helps neutralize these compounds called free radicals, which I'm gonna talk about later. These free radicals damage healthy tissue. So we wanna make sure our nutrition really backs us up to get us to the highest level of detoxing our body. So we start with amino acid called methionine. This is in protein food, easy to get to. But that amino acid goes through a methylation process. And what's important here is that we need some really important key cofactors to make this work well. Because the whole idea is we gotta use everything above this line to get down to the glutathione. The body needs an enzyme to methylate B9 folate. That enzyme, the MTHFR enzyme, 20% of the population may not have that enzyme, which means they're going to be a poor methylator. So we want to make sure to fix that for everybody. Why not just give everybody a methylated source of the correct B vitamins so just in case you're one of the poor methylators, this won't matter. And so what that means is we want to make sure we get folate in the methylated form. Now, sometimes you're gonna see folic acid, not a good thing. Folic acid is the synthetic form. It's not methylated. So we wanna make sure we get the methylated B12, the active form of B6, and I'm gonna have a little recipe for you that you can easily download to get the exact 
name that you need to look at when you're taking your multivitamin. I'm also going to talk a little bit more about choline. We want to make sure we have enough zinc and magnesium because all those are cofactors to get you to detox. So let's say you don't really have great nutrition and you don't get enough of these cofactors or maybe you are a poor methylator and you didn't know that you were supposed to look for methylated vitamins. What can happen is you build up a lot of the promo protein homocysteine and that protein homocysteine not a good thing in fact a lot of doctors will may test you for homocysteine and when you have an elevated amount of homocysteine you're at a higher risk for cardiovascular disease Alzheimer's cancer and autoimmune disease so we want to make sure that we allow this process to go all the way down through the glutathione so that you can be a good detoxifier and neutralize those free radicals now the body didn't just create this system to make glutathione. We also can use some compounds from the mitochondria, which is our metabolism. And the body can work a small little cycle and bring us back to glutathione. But the whole idea is you want to have all guns running. You want to make sure to get the detox process through the methylation and the detox process through your mitochondria. So let's talk about the free radicals. So let's talk about what glutathione is neutralizing. What type of toxin is it helping us get rid of? It is free radicals. Glutathione is what neutralizes these free radicals. And so what are free radicals? Where do they come from? Well, just like a fire that burns, it releases smoke. That's kind of the end product of fire. Well, your metabolism is similar to a fire burning inside of you. It maintains a certain degree, temperature, and what it releases are these free radicals. So free radicals are just part of our metabolism. But the good news is the body creates glutathione to help neutralize these free radicals. Free radicals oxidize tissue and damage it. So here's some free radicals. I think of them as like hungry dogs eating away and damaging our cells. And glutathione is the antioxidant. As these guys are oxidizing their way and damaging our cells, glutathione is the antioxidant that actually provides a neutralizer. And also vitamins A, C, and E also form an antioxidant property similar to glutathione. So let's look at a typical supplement and let's see if we can see if this would be a good choice. Well, here it says that it has folate, but it's in the form of folic acid. This won't work. It is not in the methylated form. Folic acid is a synthetic version and if you're a poor methylator, it will not dribble down into glutathione. It will stay as homocysteine. How about B6 and B12? It doesn't mention there that it's methylated. Sometimes you may see B12 as cobalamine, but it needs to say methylated. So chances are, if you don't see it, it's probably not methylated. And anytime you see folic acid, that is not a methylated form of folate. So let's just give it to you plain and simple. When you're looking for a multivitamin, what are you going to look for? So everything here is going to be pretty much on most multivitamins. Of course, you're going to have to search the right ones, but you're looking for the methylated B6. This is the active form of B6. So pyridoxine, hydrochloride, or it might just say pyridoxine HCL. Recommended values, I like to see anything over three milligrams. And folate, you wanna have the L5-MTHFR. Recommended levels is 400 to 800 micrograms. Now I have seen studies that it's not wise to have over a thousand micrograms. B12, a lot of times you might see it just as cobalamin. You want to make sure you have that methyl in front. B vitamins work best with other B vitamins. So you're also going to see niacin and riboflavin as part of the component of your B complex, which is great. 
Zinc, in most multivitamins, you're gonna see anywhere from 10 to 15 milligrams. Too much zinc, people that are accessing, taking uh, mega doses of zinc, anything over really 50 milligrams, it competes with the same receptor site for copper and iron. So it could mean that you'll have lower copper and iron if you're flooding the body with too much zinc. And vitamin C, anything over 100 milligrams, I consider pretty good. Now, magnesium and choline are supplements you probably have to take in addition to your multi. These are pretty easy to get in multivitamins as long as you know what you're looking for. Magnesium, anywhere from 300 to 400 milligrams, and choline, anywhere to 400 to 500. And always make sure you're getting adequate amounts of protein grams daily to make some of the other amino acids necessary for a good methylation process. The two minerals I want to talk about is magnesium and choline. Sometimes in my practice, I find patients don't eat enough foods with magnesium and choline. Now, most multivitamins, you can get the required amounts of the other ingredients. Just make sure you're getting the methylated Bs. Magnesium is rich in dark green leafy vegetables, whole grains, nuts, beans, and lentils. The amount you need for the day is 350 milligrams. And many times I recommend a supplement of two to 400 milligrams to help boost magnesium levels because most people don't eat enough leafy greens and beans, lentils to get the adequate amounts. Now, the amount of choline you need is 550 milligrams. And although the liver can make some choline, the body depends on your diet for adequate amounts. Choline is needed for proper methylation and brain health. Diets rich in eggs, dairy, meat, fish, chicken can meet choline levels considering one serving is about 120 milligrams. Choline is also in vegetables and plant foods, but you have to eat four to five cups of veggies and about two to three servings of tofu. Now, it seems like a diet rich in animal foods would be the perfect solution, but Animal-rich diets contribute to an increase in inflammation and a gut bacteria called TMAO. When the carnitine, which is high in animal foods, is combined with the choline, also high in animal foods, it becomes the perfect recipe for the bad gut bacteria called TMAO. This bacteria can travel to your arteries and cause damage, just like the free radicals. And TML gut bacteria made from eating too much animal foods is considered an independent marker for heart disease. Taking a choline supplement on a meat and cheese rich diet that has a lot of carnitine, I have seen patients lab tests show high levels of TMAO. But a choline supplement with minimal amounts of animal food and an abundance of plant foods like beans, lentils, and grains, we don't see the TMAO bacteria. Because plant-based diets or vegetarian diets or diets lower in animal foods, we have almost non-existent TMAO bacteria production in the gut. The takeaway here is, if you're going to supplement with choline, it would be better to do so on a vegetarian or a plant-based diet or a diet lower in animal foods because when choline is combined with an animal-rich diet high in eggs, meat, and cheese, you risk developing a gut bacteria that can damage arteries. Now, choline is also an important nutrient for the brain. And if you're over 60 years old, chances are you're making a lot less choline and it's a good idea for brain health. In the description box below, I will list out the glutathione recipe for maximum detox and a list of vitamins in there with the correct amounts and chemical form. I hope this has been helpful. And don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. I'll be sharing more content, doing some deep dives into nutrition information that can greatly impact your health. Also, check out my website, where you can sign up for my online course where I teach you how to correctly eat to empower your leanest and healthiest life.